um, for the fifth time, then I'm so sorry. I've had like multiple YouTube issues, but I had to jump on here. I had to do this video. This is ultra, ultra important because it is going to sell out very, very quickly. And I will cut right to the chase and skip all the other stuff because it is that important. So the deal is that little $42 wine, that crazy yesterday wine that I talked about, um, I don't know, six months ago, a year ago, who knows, eight months ago, um, it's back, but uh, sort of like, just like in a different package. So the Halpin Reserve takes the place of yesterday, sort of. Um, let me just rewind a little bit. And again, let me just like apologize for this very, very low key, low budget setup that I'm rocking right now, because this was actually supposed to be something that I did tomorrow, except that I heard the wine was about to sell out. So I was like, let me just jump on here and get this done right now. Um, even though it is not like up to snuff as far as standards, but here we go. Okay. So the yesterday wine I talked about, like I said, six months ago, eight months ago, that is a wine that Wine Access did. We call them like the NDA wines, the private label wines, whatever you want to call it. These are wines that Wine Access puts out with fruit that are that's coming from some incredible, incredible sites. So the yesterday wine was a wine that was coming from Oakville. It was a wine that scored multiple hundred point scores. It's a wine that commands five hundred dollars plus per bottle that was coming in. I think it was. I think it's the same price. I think it was like forty two dollars. Um, and that wine sold out. It's they all they all do. So these like these private label wines once they're gone they're gone for good. They don't, they don't reappear. You can't find them at other stores. You can't, um, you generally can't buy them on secondary market. They just, they tend to like disappear within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and I say that, you know, not to scare anyone, but to let you know, uh, which is why I'm doing this because they, they genuinely, they go and I get DMS and comments all the time that, uh, that, People buy these wines. They're like, I wish I got more. I, I'm out of it. Um, <laughs> you were told there'd be punch and pie. I don't know what to tell you. I don't punch or pie. Um, okay, so that's the deal with the NDA wine. So the, the yesterday wine sold out. That was like gone and lost forever. But I got a call earlier this week or last week that it was sort of coming back in a different package. And I won't bore you with the crazy details. Or I guess I, I will save those details for wine access because they did a great, a great write up of what is happening. But if you have bought wine access NDA wines before, and you're familiar with wine access, then you probably have seen Halpin before that name sounds familiar, it might be recognizable to you. So Halpin is actually a person that does uh, these like he's, he's got like a whole personality going on. Um, but he will do these like private label wines with his winemaker, um, or so I understand. And so Basically, what happened was yesterday went out. Mr. Halpin got all oh, bent out of shape that he didn't have the yesterday wine, and he wanted he wanted grapes from this site and couldn't get it. So he went to his winemaker and said, "I want grapes from this site." And so was the birth of Halpin Private Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. That is essentially the twin sister of what was yesterday. So same grapes. I think it's the same winemaker. I, I actually am a little bit unclear as to as to what's going on there. Um, but essentially, if you loved yesterday, this is a wine that you will want to get your hands on because it is, um, like I said, twin sister, same site. So just to reiterate, this is, this is, you know, I'm calling it sort of like yesterday redux, but Halpin Private Reserve is again coming from a winery that any any serious collector in the world if they're if they've got napa in their cellar they're gonna have this wine this is hallowed ground from napa valley from oakville which might i add is you know the epicenter the highest concentration of high profile high scoring the best wines in napa valley very rarely are you finding a quality cabernet coming from oakville for under a hundred bucks. Let's like, let's clear that up now. I mean, that's just crazy. But to get one for $42 that is coming from a place like the one we suspect is coming from today, that is just a little bit bananas. So 
This is coming from a site in Oakville that has, like I said, scored multiple 100 point scores. It is a site that any collector, a serious collector, would be super stoked to have in their cellar. In fact, they would con- they would consider it a must have. Your cellar would not be complete without a few bottles of this wine. Um, and this wine would command prices of $500 plus on up. If it's the one that I'm thinking of, I can tell you I've seen it on the market for over $2,000 a bottle. So we'll just stop there. Um, I'm sure some of you are dying to find out how this wine actually tastes. So let me just pick up my glass and show you the gorgeous color. I mean, wow, look at that. It's kind of purpley. It's got some red hues. And on the nose, I mean, crazy, crazy intensity, massive fruit. This has now been open in my glass probably for 30 minutes now that I've been trying to go live and talk about this wine, except that YouTube keeps kicking me off, so hopefully they will stop doing that. Um, It is intensely, intensely concentrated purple flower, violets, uh, big blackberries, tons of currant. I mean, this is like, this is leading with so much fruit. But there's also something a little bit savory underneath of it that like that, you know, again, like leads me to believe that it is from this site, because this is the kind of thing that you only see from incredible fruit sources, incredible sites like the one we think this is coming from here. So to be getting all that on the nose, I mean, every time you go back to it, it's just a little bit more perfumey. I will say the yesterday wine, I mean, that wine, I think it it led with more red fruit and it had what appeared to me to be a a judicious use of new French oak. Uh, It had a ton of vanilla, a ton of toastiness. Um, It smelled great. I mean, it was a wine that like you smelled and you're like, oh, they use the good stuff for this wine. Like this is really high quality oak. Um, But I find in this, this version, this health and private reserve that the oak is a little bit more integrated. I mean, I find a little bit of vanilla there, but it's definitely the supporting character in this play. Mm. I mean, so, so big, juicy, wow, in your face, mouth cutting, but wow, just delivers clean, clean finish. I mean, a finish that like, again, it's not hard to make a huge wine. Like anybody can go and take the grapes and macerate the crap out of them and throw a bunch of new French oak on there and get a big wine. That's pretty easy to do. Not cheap, but easy. Um, what is challenging to do is have a wine be as big as this one is because it is a mouthful. This is over 15% alcohol. This is a mouthful of a wine, but still have balance, but still have complexity, still have nuance and minerality and all the things that we want from a great, great wine. Uh, and I think this wine does it so, so well. I mean, there is you know, a judicious amount of oak, uh, excuse me, judicious amount of fruit. Um, but what there is also is a, a judicious amount of complexity. Mm. Crazy stuff. Um, if you are someone that collects wine or is thinking about getting multiple bottles and not just, you know, a couple, I I do recommend it. I think these are wines that can lay down. And I think this is a great example. I did mention, I don't know if if I did, uh, it's a 2018 vintage. So a gorgeous vintage from Napa Valley um, and a, a vintage that all of the winemakers were super excited about. In fact, that is the primary reason that wine access and, you know, the, the private reserve, excuse me, the private label wines are able to happen is because there was, it was such a great vintage. There was such an incredible amount of fruit that there was the possibility of um, having things like this. I want to answer a question that just popped up. I really hope I can find this because I am, there we go. Okay. Um, Harry Hobbs, can you talk a little bit about extraction and if that's, uh, if that's what comes from macerating the fruit so much? Um, Yeah. Extraction. (sighs) Listen, I'm not a winemaker, so I'm going to paraphrase here. If you are a winemaker, please forgive me. Um, Extraction is essentially, I mean, if you think about how wine is made, you take the grapes, you press them off their skins if it's white, but you let them sit with their skins if it's red. 
And so extraction is that time where the grapes sort of sort of sit with the skins. It's the time where uh, the color is literally and the flavor is extracted out of it. So, you know, you can think of it sort of like a soup, right? Or like a maybe maybe more aptly uh, a sauce. So if a sauce is sitting for an extended amount of time, really, you know, getting the color, getting that extraction, letting it sit with the tomatoes, maybe this is a bad example. But if you think about um, grapes sitting in a in a fermenter, whatever fermenting vessel, and letting all that color out, letting all that flavor out, that's extraction. And there's a gentle way of doing that where, you know, winemakers can control temperatures so that, you know, things don't spike during the process. You know, some winemakers will only do a few days of, of maceration to get extraction, but some will let it go for, you know, a lot longer. Um, there's all different ways to get, you know, to handle your extraction. But, you know, sometimes what happens is wines get over extracted, meaning, you know, they get too, it's too much flavor. It's too much um, richness. And then there's also, uh, you know, we talk about extraction. Sometimes we conflate the word um, with being, you know, oh, an overabundance of density. So a wine that just has like too much, like it doesn't have um, the things that we want in the way of like pullback. It doesn't have restraint. So it's just too much fruits, too much density. So um, sort of a, a weird way to describe that uh, and maybe not as eloquent as I wanted, but hopefully that kind of describes that. But what I'm saying about this wine is it has, it has great extraction, meaning it has great concentration. It has great complexity. Um, I guess I should say it has great concentration and great flavor, but what it also has, which can sometimes be lost in that process, is the complexity, meaning it's not it's not a jar of jam. It's not just a wine that only has fruit. It's got other things. And a lot of that has to do with winemaking, um, but most of that is coming from terroir. Most of it is coming from the quality of the fruit because you can't really you can't really solve for that in during the winemaking process. If the fruit wasn't good to begin with, then you're kind of screwed. You know, you can't you can't fake minerality. You can't fake complexity. Um, that comes from terroir. That comes from the ground. Um, and that's how you know when you've got a really great wine. Um, you know, you can tell. You know, when when it's got you know complexity and balance and all the things that we want. That's the sign of really really great fruit. And that's what we've got here. So, one more time. I don't think I've showed the bottle um, a whole bunch, but this is the Halpin Private Reserve on Wine Access. Available now. Only 100 cases made, and this is $42 going down to 36. I know for, for some of you, 42 is a big number, but if you are someone that loves Napa Valley wines and you want really high quality wines for a fraction of the price, this is your moment to shine. Um, I'm gonna leave you with that. It is Sunday, May uh, 2nd. So uh, if you are watching this, I don't know, a few days from now, it may be gone already, but make sure you hit your notification bell so you know when I go live and I tell you about these wines because I will never, ever, ever miss the opportunity to tell you about incredible, incredible offerings like this. Like I said, this has been probably six months since I've talked about an NDA wine on Wine Access, but well worth the wait. There have been a few in between there, not that they weren't good, but you know, I just really wait for the special ones and I wait for the opportunities to let you know when they're amazing and worth grabbing tanker loads of. So I will see you soon. Enjoy whatever it is you're doing. I will put the link to this wine in the description below along with my, I think there's a code probably already um, for that first purchase of 50, excuse me, 150 or more. You get 50 bucks off. Thanks a lot, Wine Access. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.